Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 87 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Ooh, it's getting dark out. I'm going to head over to my Void Age and recap what we worked on last episode. We went and made a Void Age of Mob Spawners. Ooh, very cool. Uh, now, I went ahead and, uh, you know, made sure it was a little bit more safe to just land in a spot and not accidentally fall off the edge. Uh, but what we've got here is a way that we uh, probably want to get in using a portable hole. And uh, we've got a nice little portal gun over here, and we've got a nice little mob spawning area to just spawn up a bunch of evil bad monsters. Uh, simply flip off the light, and boom, we've got plenty of uh, mob spawning action going in here and if we check the F7 we'll see that mobs can spawn everywhere in here so this little bit of light that I set up right here is not impacting uh, the mob spawning potential uh, but what does seem to cause a little bit of a problem is uh, how close I am to this room so if I just pop through my portal you can see I'm a few blocks away you know just staying a little bit of a distance back and then we can pop right back through and hopefully find a bunch of mobs in there uh, we've got a few nice look at that some endermen showing up Ooh, some creepers, some skeletons, awesome. So this room should hopefully serve as a pretty good way to spawn a bunch of mobs. Now I'm going to turn the light back on here, and if we want we can go in and just kill things manually like so. But that's not what we're going to want to do in the end, absolutely not. What's up creepers? What's up Enderman? Come on back guys, nobody's going to bother you. <laughs> No, we definitely want to auto-kill things. So, what I think would be a lot of fun is just have a couple different ways to automatically kill stuff. Uh, that's the plan, at least. Uh, there they are, hiding up top. Taking them down. Excellent. So, uh, what my plan here is, of course, to uh, just implement some kind of automatic kill system to make sure these things just die very, very quickly and efficiently. So, I'm going to work on that this episode, and we'll be right back once I've got some of the things I need. I already have an idea to work on uh, some uh, mining laser turtles, and actually one of the things I did between last episode and this one is actually shrink this room down a little bit, one block on either side. I don't know if you noticed it or not, uh, but now we should have no problem uh, activating the turtle attack command and that will shoot the laser straight across the room so you can see here that uh, if I put some cobble down just to demonstrate uh, the laser will reach all the way across and knock off the cobble but it won't break the wall on the opposite side so we've got the perfect length there to make sure that this thing is doing what we want it to do all right back in just a few minutes once I've got some more turtles and maybe a couple other fun things to mess around with all right, guys, there's something I'd like to build here just to help out with uh, some of the things I have planned coming up here. I want to go ahead and automate the filling of cells and things with water. All right, so let's take a look at how we can do that. Uh, what I want to first do is take my Emmy blank pattern over here. And in particular, what I want to make right now is... Um, the cells from industrial craft so that's the empty cell right here okay so that's what we're gonna do we're going to encode this guy whoops just like this encode ready to go all right we'll put this in here so now my system knows how to make the empty cells all right now I do happen to have a few of them laying around luckily so I'm just gonna snag you know a bunch I don't know that should be plenty now the next thing I'm gonna do is take a chest like this just one and I'm also going to get some uh, iron bars do I have any of those laying around good I do and then finally I need to get something from Zycraft it's called uh, the engineering brick and what I'm making here are item IOs now these guys allow you to interact with your Zycraft tanks using pipes and all kinds of cool stuff so what I'm planning to do here is uh, just add the item IO uh, to the um, you know system of uh, networking that I've got going on so let's go ahead and take a look at what we can do here I'm thinking if I just uh, break this guy and maybe this guy I want to do this one. There we go. Now I'm going to add the item IOs here. And here. And then we'll reinitialize everything. And look, the tank's back up and running and everything's looking happy. Cool. Now, if you want, you want to go ahead and take uh, your hand here and right-click to change this guy. Or, uh, you know, let's see. 
it's shift right click to change the modes here. Now blue means uh, it will, uh, when an item lands inside this with a pipe, it'll go ahead and uh, import it into the uh, area here. So it'll land in here. See the blue line has been lit up? So we can go ahead and do that. So with white, it's uh, you know not being very specific, but if we go ahead and set to blue, we'll say this guy's always gonna be an input. And with this, we're gonna set this to orange and that's always gonna be an output. So hopefully I should be able to uh, make some item IOs with uh, applied energistics that can interact with this thing. I've actually not tried this before, but it in theory should work. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get myself the applied energistic stuff that I need. All right, got what we need here. So what I'm going to do is plug into the ME network. So let's see. You know what I'm probably, do I have a, uh, yeah, I'm good with all that stuff. Okay, cool. I think I've got pretty much everything I need. So since I'm going to be working outside, I want to make sure it's not dark out. Creeper sneaking up on me would not be pleasant. There we go. So, here we are. Uh, what I want to do is plug into my ME network. So, is there stuff running through the ground here? It might be. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, let's just uh, bring this guy out right here. And we could probably run this thing straight up along the back wall. One higher is what we're going to be looking at. So the import is going to go here because we're going to be importing into the network. So, uh, I guess technically there is where we're going to want to put it. Cool. So anything here will be imported in the network. And we can test this by placing an empty cell in, and boom, it went straight in the network. And if we check here, we should see water cell. There's one of them. Excellent. And, uh, you know, we put another empty cell in, and boom, it gets pulled in again. And if we check water cell now, we've got two of them. Perfect. That's exactly how I want to see it working. Now here, I'm just going to place this guy. Uh, we can go ahead and set this to always active. That's fine. Move stacks of items. That's fine. And then finally, this thing right here, uh, let's go ahead and get one of those water cells that we made. And uh, we're going to encode, where's my portable hole here? There we go. Uh, let's set this thing up to one empty cell. Gives me one water cell. Perfect. And then we can encode this thing. So now we have ways to make water cells automatically, which is exactly what I wanted to do because what I'm about to make uh, requires a lot of water cells. Uh, I've got a couple things in mind uh, that I need to make, so this is going to help. So ideally, I should be able to go ahead and say, hey, make for me, I don't know, 16 of these. You know, so let's bump it up by 10. We'll just go with 10. That should be good. And then right in here, because these things fill up so quick, we can see we already got water cells before I could even look at it because multi-tanks here fill up their items so fast. I think they fill up like one item a tick or something, so it's crazy quick. So we've now automated the filling of water cells. Beautiful. So what I can make now is, dun dun dun, oh look, I have a macerator in my inventory. Why might I have that? Uh, let's go ahead and make ourselves an upgrade. Because basically I want to make something that's going to require a lot of coal dust, and I don't feel like waiting for it. So I'm going to make an overclocker upgrade. Cool. So I want to go ahead and uh, teach this thing a recipe for 10k coolant cells. What is that recipe? It's just uh, one of these water capsules that we just showed it how to make surrounded by tin. So we'll get one of these dudes. Well, yeah, that should be good. Four for now. Uh, we're going to want some electronic circuits, which uh, this guy already knows how to make. And we're going to want some copper cabling. Beautiful. So I'm going to come over here and tell you surrounded in tin in code place it in there before I forget and then this guy we're gonna say um, let's just go ahead and make the coolant cells well, we don't really need three we only needed one but that's fine we'll use them don't worry one two three copper cables and encode this thing beautiful so now i can make these overclocker upgrades very quickly and easily uh and that's going to help because i want to place down this thing so we're going to have to remove you for a moment sorry mr lever you're going to be replaced right in the front we're running out of sides on this thing nowhere else for me really to put it and uh the macerator is here and ready to go and i'm going to 
request. You ready for this? Even though I don't have all the ingredients made already, we're going to go for an overclocker upgrade. I'd like, we've already got three, let's make five more. Begin. And it should quickly craft them. Beautiful. There we go. Nice. How do you like that, guys? I think that is pretty awesome. Now, all I need is some power, so let's get some fiber cabling here. And we will be ready to go. So I might change this up, um, because in the past I've been having um, the pulverizer over here do everything, but all these recipes, uh, obsidian, huh? Just want to make sure that pulverized obsidian can be made in a macerator. I'm not sure that it can now. Only from a pulverizer. Ugh, that's a nuisance. Hmm. All right. I'm going to need another item IO and another import. So why don't I make those real quick off camera and then I'll be right back. And there we go. We can take our, um, you know, sand from cobblestone and coal dust from coal recipes out and place them in the pulverizer over here in the in the macerator. Then now when we request coal dust, it's going to be a lot quicker. Now, why did I want to go through all that trouble? Well, I want to craft something that's pretty mm, expensive. I want to show you guys how to make a high voltage solar array. These guys are insanely expensive, but uh, it's most definitely going to be useful for us. So what does this require? It requires 512 low voltage solar or basic solar arrays okay so we just need solar panels from industrial craft the reason i'm doing this is because we've got an eternal day age out there and i want to power a lot of the stuff going on with solar power i haven't gotten too much into solar power but it's pretty straightforward and simple when the sun's up it's going to go ahead and generate eu one eu per um, uh, solar panel. Now, solar arrays come in three different flavors. You've got your low voltage solar array, which is eight solar panels around a low voltage transformer, and that'll create eight EU per tick. Next up, we've got the uh, MV solar array, which is eight low voltage solar arrays around a medium voltage transformer. That gives you a medium voltage solar array, which creates 64 EU per tick. So it's basically just one block that produces all the extra. And then finally, eight medium voltage solar arrays. So we're going to need 512 high voltage solar arrays in the end. What's involved in making a solar panel? Well, it's not too much more than we already know how to make. I just need to teach this machine how to make generators which really isn't too bad. And then, um, you know, everything else kind of falls into place. So let's go ahead and start making uh, the recipes we need for generators. I got this covered. We've been like halfway there, I think. All right, I will uh, set this up and be right back. And with that, guys, we've uh, taught the system how to make generators. And finally, um, we should be able to easily make our solar arrays now. So we just got to do this generator. And we put our electronic circuits on either side, a little bit of coal dust like that, and I don't have any glass on me. Let's try that again. Beautiful. So I guess the real trick now is sit and wait. That's right. I'm going to kick off the creation of solar panels. Let's go ahead and just go with 64 for now. That'll get me at least a medium voltage solar array. We're going to see if that's enough juice uh, for what we want to do. We may or may not want a high voltage, but I mean, at the very least, 64 for now should work pretty well. Uh, you can see up here what we're waiting on. So currently we're waiting on a generator. Uh, so there's a bunch of things being crafted. It's pretty much the uh, slowest point at this right now is creating the um, the, the uh, refined iron for the circuits and for the machine blocks that are part of this thing. Uh, now the coal going in there will happen soon, but right now we have a surplus of coal dust simply because I made a bunch, remember, a little bit back. So uh, I'm going to sit here and uh, watch the solar panels get crafted, see if we run out of any resources or anything. But in the end, I think we're going to have a pretty nice way to power things. So we're good to go here. Now let's talk about what we're going to power. Well, I, um, you know, want to power up those turtles. Now, I don't want to have to constantly feed them with coal. So, what can we do? Uh, let's take a look at turtles. Hmm. Well, we've got turtle teleporters. I know that's added. Let's take a look at the MISC peripherals mod. So, I'm just going to shift click on this guy. And what we'll find, one of the earliest things made in MISC peripherals was the charge station. And what this does is it delivers uh, a form of power, be it industrial craft or uh, Minecraft tools, something like that, uh, to your turtles and feeds them with all the energy they could need. Now, um, I've determined 
determined that I'm going to need about mm, 25 or so of these things. So we're going to need some iron gears and some golden conductive pipes and some redstone. Not a big deal. That shouldn't be too hard to make. All right, so I'm going to make some charge stations uh, off camera here, and then we're going to get, uh, you know, the, the solar panels ready. We'll probably even make an MFSU to make sure everything stays really well charged, and then I'll be back to, uh, you know, take a look at what we want to do. All right, 64 solar panels down, and while I was waiting for that to craft, I went ahead and made myself uh, these eight LV transformers that we're going to need. That cuts us eight low voltage solar panels. Again, that's uh, eight Minecraft or uh, EU per tick, and then... Uh, Got to make myself an MV transformer here. Got all the components. And we can just set that all up around like so. Boom. Medium voltage transformer. Or uh, solar array. Nice. All right. So let's get things started over here. Uh, now, over on this side of the wall is where I'm probably going to have all my turtles and stuff, right? So let's set up uh, the solar panel right about... I mean, it could just be right up here. It doesn't really matter exactly where it goes. Uh, then we've got the glass fiber cabling like so, and then we're gonna have the MFSU here. This will at least get the uh, charge started on the MFSU. Now, of course, I could easily set up uh, my power transfer system from the nuclear reactor in the overworld or anything like that, but I wanted to show you guys the uh, MV solar panels. I also wanted to automate the construction of those a little bit. Now, I could easily add a couple more MVs or even upgrade this guy to a high voltage, which is uh, pretty expensive in the end, but you know, for now, this will work perfect so while that's charging up i also have in the overworld a little bit of work being done i've uh, issued a command to my wireless uh, system here let's take a look uh, we are making lasers and we're up to i don't know about eight or nine there ten looks like it so right now we're just waiting for more stuff to be made uh, we've got some mixed metal ingots cooking up and some refined iron and all that good stuff we do have eight overclockers in the compressor right now that i've automated the creation of overclockers i'm just looking to make more <laughs> all right so we've got all that stuff going i think we're in pretty good shape let me get my uh turtles ready to go so let's uh wait for those lasers to be made i'm going to set up the turtle uh back here and then once he's working i'm gonna uh copy be the code that I put on the turtle to all the other turtles that I'm about to place in this world. So let's see, what do I want to do? Basically, uh, I want to have um, the charge pad, I think, could probably go on the back. Might not be a bad idea. So if the charge pad's on the back, we need to issue uh, the um, redstone power. So I want to check if we've got redstone here. I'm just going to do something like this, just to demonstrate this working. And I should have levers on me, I guess not. Oh boy. All right, so lever here. So I want to see if uh, the redstone signal here is going to be read by the turtle. So let's write a quick turtle program. All right, I think this will work. I haven't tried it yet, but basically what this guy's going to do is it's continuously going to loop, and it's going to wait for a redstone state change. So it's basically going to say, hey, as soon as I detect some redstone happening, I'm going to go ahead and send the attack command to the turtle, and then I'm going to sleep for a second and wait. Uh, and then again, it's going to sit there and wait for the uh, redstone state change. So let's run the fire program. Nothing's going to happen. Now, if I'm correct in this, I'm uh, actually going to set this up with a button right here, just for the coolness factor of being able to push a button and firing a laser. Haha. <laughs> Alright, so maybe one second isn't long enough of a delay because uh, it looks like the button's staying longer than that. So it's any kind of state change on the uh, redstone signal. So let's see. Um, well, the button, it doesn't really matter. One second's fine because uh, what we're going to probably have in the end is uh, a computer control, which will be, you know, stronger than a button. So let's see. If I flip the lever here, that should also work. So I just want to demonstrate, want to make sure that this redstone signal, boom, definitely not. Okay, that's what I was kind of afraid of. Hmm. Well, if that's not gonna work, how am I gonna get you to behave? Let's see, give me a minute, guys. Hold on a sec, did I just derp? Yeah, I did, ha, <laughs> cool. All right, definitely derped. The program wasn't running course so uh that's why it didn't fire all right so that laser wiring thing is good so now all i've got to do is set it up so that we've got 25 of these guys because that's how many blocks we've got going across the row here and um anything in this line of fire will be destroyed all we need is some charging up of the uh, turtles courtesy of the energy in the mfsu and of course we're going to need um you know some more red alloy wiring and maybe even a little control mechanism but i think we're well on our way to making this happen so that's an extremely simple program so i'm going to go ahead and uh just for you guys paste bin put fire beautiful and uh whenever i want to grab it i can just issue the paste bin get command 
QXFTDS9A. Fire. So I'll be doing that on all my turtles in just a minute. All right, looks easy enough. 25 remaining laser turtles, please. Let's get these guys set up. All right, so we're back and uh, working my way towards making something that hopefully works out pretty well. Uh, bumping out a bunch of power here for these turtles that I lined up. Now they're all ready to run, uh, so it shouldn't be too big a deal actually. And I think, yeah, good. Uh, we don't have chunk loaders here, so I set them all to run that program on startup. And when I left and came back, their startup executed, so that's perfect. Let's go into the room now and set up our portable uh, charging station. So can I sneak this guy in here? Oh boy, right, ha, of course. I need to uh, tune this down at least a little bit. I don't think uh, it likes being on this voltage line. So let's uh, get some transformers here. That would probably help. All right, uh, just rotating this around and now we shouldn't have too many problems. So let's pop back in there and see what happens. Gonna behave this time? Okay, good, no blowing up. Beautiful. Now, if we were to uh, pop into this turtle here, and you see I was going to put coal in there, and then I just said, you know what, forget it. I'm not going to do that. Let's do a turtle.getFuel level like so. 250. Cool. Now, if we run this again a few seconds later, we'll see we're at 323. We're at 362. So we're doing a good job of powering up our turtles. So these charge stations are doing exactly what we want. They're supplying power to the turtles so that they have enough juice to fire a mining laser at the enemies in the room. So just going to go ahead and put these guys all through here, and I'll be right back. All right, ready to try this out, guys? So we've got all the turtles set up. Now, obviously, this wiring is atrocious, I'm not going to lie. But uh, I wanted to just get it up and running, and then we'll clean it up and make it look all fancy and nice. And in the end, we'll probably wind up using a master control computer for this type of thing with all touchscreen and fancy stuff, and it'll be really neat. But for now, we're just demonstrating proof of concept and getting it working. So in theory, uh, if we were to sneak into this room and even come all the way down here, let's make sure that we're getting power at this level. So uh, turtle get fuel level all right it's getting very little so that's making me a little nervous like it's obviously getting some but very small amount because that uh that power line is just you know choking in the end i mean it's it's you know splitting up all this power all the way down this line that is not going to work out too well maybe we need to do something a little bit less hmm. and how's the uh mfsu doing well, it's doing all right but not great. All right, let me see if I can't do something about this. All right, so for now, my solution is that uh, I'm cooking up another set of 64 solar panels, and uh, we're going to build uh, just more power supply in here. Oh, you know what I should have made before I came out? Uh, let's just grab from here. I can make it real quick. Two of you. Three of you. Forgot I needed to transform this power. So I made an MFE this time instead of a full-blown MFSU. That MFSU is probably going to go towards uh, power and some other stuff. But the plan here, of course, is uh, we'll have the MFE here, okay, something along these lines, okay. And then uh, we can just transform that like so, and this. And now I'm waiting for all those, uh, you know, solar panels to be made. So at the very least, I grabbed an energy crystal just to demonstrate that power is going to be coming in both sides. So the ones in the middle will be the, the ones that are like the least charged, but I think in the end will wind up pretty good. So let's give this a shot, shall we? Uh, in theory, all I got to do is press this button. Oh, that was cool. Nice. So you can see they do fire twice, but that's because the button sends its uh, pulse just a little bit slower, or, or yeah, slower than we would want it to. But that's okay, because once we have this thing computer controlled, it's going to be less of a problem. So let's wait a few minutes here. Um, get some mobs to spawn in there. Come on, guys, you can spawn. Don't be afraid. I'm only going to kill you with lasers. Come on now. I don't think they like to spawn when I'm recording. Ooh, there we go. Got a few happening there. All right, we're just going to give it a few moments here for a few more in there. Now we're talking. Let's see what happens when we fire the lasers. Nice. Oh, man, that's hilarious. Oh, boy. Creepers blow up, do they? That's cool. That is pretty awesome. 
Very nice. So we're going to have to clean up the mess that these creepers made. But in the end, I think we have a pretty nice laser firing system. Excellent. So what I could probably do is build this stuff out of something material that's not going to be so easily broken. I have an idea or two. We'll have to see how it works. No biggie, though. We'll definitely fix that up. Shouldn't be too hard of a uh, problem to solve, the whole, you know, creepers explode and kill things. Looks like the uh, turtles are no worse for the wear, so that's fine. Ooh, we definitely did lose a couple of our lights, though. That's not good. That's all right. I've got a few more sitting back home. All right, let me clean up this mess, and then I'll... All right, there's one more thing I might want to try here, and that's the high-energy pellet launcher. Um, this guy is pretty dangerous. I'm not going to lie. You want to be careful when messing around with these things. But let's see. Ooh, I've got some enemies out here to test with. Beautiful. Let's see. I know I can rotate this guy a little bit somehow, but let's see what we got here. See, that's what we're talking about. That's the thing we want to be careful with. So how do I rotate this thing? There must be a way. I don't think this will do it. All right, let's see. Hang on a second, you. All right, this ought to work. Let's see what happens. Nice. Look at that, man. That thing does some damage. Watch out, though, because it will bounce back. So you want to be real careful. If the player interacts with this thing, you're going to regret it. All right, so the high-energy pellet launcher might be another solution. Very cool. So let's go make a couple of these, because I just want to try them out as another form of destruction. So I have, uh, you know, just a few more to make. Oh, they don't stack? You don't say. That's going to be a nuisance. All right. Well, I'll have to make a bunch of these off camera because they don't stack. By the way, in the end, I wasn't rotating them. It just uh, depends on what block you click on to determines the direction they face. So, you know, basic start like this. And then maybe let's grab some wireless stuff. All right, in the end, I'm going with frequency 45 on a wireless transmitter, wired it up over here. Again, just getting it started, and we're going to give this thing a shot. So this is number two method of killing enemies in this room, okay? Uh, now, there is a way to deal with the bouncing things. We probably will have to wait till next episode to deal with that, but in theory right now, if I hit this button, look at that. Boom. Very cool. All right, now they will eventually dissipate, so give it a few seconds, and... Uh, Oh, that's cool. They leave little, like, marks and stuff on the wall. Nice. That's new. After a bit, they'll dissipate. Don't worry. So, yeah, look, there they are. They're gone. All right. Let's try these things out, shall we? Oh, look. Cool. We've got some spawning happening back there. I would like to kind of investigate just to see. Yeah, we're cool. It looks like it's emitting a little bit of light, or some light's coming in through somewhere. It might be those uh, blocks themselves just emit a bit of light. No big deal. But I want to see what happens when we fire these things with a room full of enemies. All right, this ought to do. We'll turn the lights on. We've got a bunch of stuff in there. Fire. Oh, nice. Wow, that is cool. Again. Excellent. Now, does that drop the items? Yeah, it does. Cool. I wasn't sure if these things cause items to drop or not, and I am happy to see that they, in fact, do. Beautiful. All right. So I'm going to have to craft a few more of these and uh, then wire everything up. So that's going to be a second way of killing things. All right, guys. Unfortunately, though, I do think we're going to have to wrap up the episode here. Uh, why don't I go ahead and... Uh, yeah, I left a little bit of a mess out here. I'll tidy this up later. But for now, uh, we do got to get wrapping up. So, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We've got two ways to kill things. There's one or two more I might want to toy with. We'll see. Um, give me some feedback on this episode. Tell me what you guys liked. And if you want to see one or two other ways, we could, uh, you know, assault the enemies in this room. But then in the end, we're going to have to collect things too. So don't forget about that. So, for now, we do got to wrap up. So let me craft up just a few more of these interesting things here. That ought to be good. Also, my solar panels are ready, so I've got 64 in there. I'll be uh, hooking those up to uh, the medium voltage solar array and getting it, you know, powering that MFE on the other end of the line. Uh, but for now, we can just run down here and we'll hold our way in and just set these things up. Like one, two, three. Come 
come on now. So, two methods of killing enemies in this room. Ha, huh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, let's see, one other method I might have in mind. A lot of people have requested Tesla coils, even though I've used Tesla coils in the past. So, you know, I was kind of not going to use them. Uh, but a lot of people in the last video that I posted said, like, come on, use Tesla coils. So, we'll see. We'll give it a shot. Uh, at least for now, though, uh, I do need to get wrapped up, like I said. So, let's see. Let's get this thing finished up. That might be enough high-energy pellet launchers. We'll have to, of course, get some more red alloy wiring going in there. Um, let's see. Perfect. Just enough. Excellent. So, we're ready to roll. Um, so, coming up next uh, episode or two, we might have one or two death destruction methods that we want to come up with. And then we might also, uh, potentially feasibly, perhaps, might want to start collecting the items from this room. So we've obviously got a bunch of bone and string and gunpowder and arrows and uh, rotten flesh. We're going to want to collect these and do something with them. But for now, I hope you guys enjoyed checking out uh, the way to charge turtles using uh, energy, getting the laser turtles going, uh, and we're going to eventually have a master control uh, panel here that's going to be a touchscreen monitor, and I'll be able to click on different buttons to make different things happen. So if I wanted to, for example, fire the uh, mining lasers, like boom, I'd click one part of the screen and then uh, if I wanted to fire the high energy pellets I'd click another part of the screen and they do do a pretty nice job of insta killing things so I like the way those turned out there's a couple other things I have in mind though so for now direwolf20 signing off on the episode hope you guys enjoyed it and come back next time because there's more death destruction and mayhem to be caused all right guys take it easy